Hey ya folks, my name is Provis, and welcome to a brand new game called Of Life and Land. This is a survival colony builder that is hot off the presses, just entered into early access last week on April 2nd. And I haven't seen a lot of coverage for this game on YouTube or on the Steam webpage, but I do think this game deserves a bit of a spotlight. This game interests me because it plays more like a proper simulator than just a simple city builder. What do I mean by that? Well, imagine a game like Dwarf Fortress was turned into a medieval city builder, and you're actually about halfway there. This game's nowhere near that complicated, but you'll see what I mean in just a bit. Let's go ahead and start up a new game, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, in this version of the Early Access, we only have access to one map, and that is Kurzevin, so we'll go there. Hey, look, it's a RuneScape character! No, I'm just kidding, but this game does have a low-poly art style throughout, which I think some people will say is not really appealing to them, but I actually think the devs did a pretty good job. I think this looks pretty good for what it is. All right, let's go ahead and zoom out so you can kind of appreciate this entire world that we are working with. Now, as I said, everything in this game is going to have its own simulated needs that are trying to be met, and so what that's going to look like, as you can imagine, our citizens, right, these guys right here, we cannot control them directly. All we can do is assign buildings to be constructed and send people to different professions, and from there, they'll go ahead and live their lives. They'll spend a few hours working, they'll seek out their own social interactions, food, sleeping positions, etc. That's all going to be on them, we have no immediate control. That's typical for a lot of citizens, but it's not typical for a lot of animals. These guys are also going to have their own individual needs that they are seeking to meet in their own way, and that could include, by the way, pilfering for my food crates. That's going to happen, for absolute sure. We also see that with even the individual plants. Trees, uh, wild wheat, berries, whatever it's going to be, they all have their own needs, and as long as those needs are met, they will thrive. If they are not, they will wither and die. And all of this is being simulated, every single thing at the same time. That's kind of impressive. But here's the other thing that's really cool to me. Not only is a lot being calculated, but on top of that, knowing that there's going to be a lot of downtime, the developers included not just simple 2, 3, 5, 5, 10, or even 20 times speed, you can go to 50, 100, or even 300 times speed, and the game still runs extremely smoothly. This is impressive to me. Anyway, let's go ahead and plan out our town just a bit. So I'm going to go to the build menu here. First couple things I know I'm going to need are some forester's stumps. These are going to chop down trees to get me some wood, as well as gather up, let's say, any branches or some leaves or maybe even some wild mushrooms that are available out in the wild. So we'll place a couple of those down, and we'll just go ahead and connect those with a road because I know I'm going to need those. I also want a gatherer's shack, which is going to look for anything it can forge naturally from the world. There's a fair bit of wild wheat in this direction, so I feel like something over here would be a very good thing for me to place. You can see we'll get some grass, there's some bushes, fruit trees, and so on. So go ahead and place that down like so, and as before, I wouldn't mind connecting these up by road. Knocking down a fruit tree sucks, but oh well, it is what it is. I'm also going to go ahead and get myself a stone mason. We need to get some, uh, basically raw stone and cut it into something usable. There's a fair bit to be had up over here. There's also some small sources this direction. I'll just go ahead and place one right over here. That should be fine. And again, we'll place down some roads to make sure this is all connected. We have a few processing buildings available. Wouldn't mind getting myself, let's say, a hand mill. So we'll place one over here, trying not to knock down the fruit, uh, fruits, vegetables, and grasses. We'll also get a simple oven so we can take the wild wheat. We'll get it down into flour, and then we'll turn it into bread. That'll be useful. We can get some clothes, some planks, firewood. We need to get some housing. Also a campfire, a place for people to properly socialize. I'll go ahead and place that down over here. That actually needs to be a very high priority because I believe we can store our food there and hopefully keep it away from all the wild animals that are going to be stealing from me. So we'll go to this and we'll say this is a high priority building. We also want these to be high priority buildings. We want the gatherer's hut to be high priority and we want the stonemason to be high priority. These can be low for the moment and then let's go ahead and think a little bit about some housing. Straw huts are basically just thatched roof cottages so they're fairly cheap for us to make. You can rotate things by the way using the arc Key, and you can also hit tab in order to change up the style just a little bit if that's something you're interested in. So this should be good for the moment. Now we're going to go ahead and jump up to, let's say, a 10 times speed, and already some bunnies and some sheeps are stealing my food. Yeah, they're going to do that a lot, I hate to say. Um, you're going to learn to hate wildlife in this game. Beware the hungry cow, all right? Those things are voracious. They will eat you out of house and home. 
Now over here in the Foresters launch, we can see that people are gathering up some of the branches and the raw wood we're going to need. Almost every building, you can change up the priorities of varying different activities if something's more important to you. You can also get some upgrades. So if I were willing to pay a bit of raw wood per year, we could boost up the storage space of this particular work spot. Also collection speed at the cost of some yearly branches or rags or whatever it's going to be, right? So that all can be kind of useful. I'm not worried about that right now, but if you can get a lot of extra resources around, they can give you a much needed economic boost. I am going to go over here to the Gatherer's Shack and assign an extra worker so a third person is working. If there's anyone who is currently unemployed, they will try to automatically find some jobs, alright? But you can assign people to multiple jobs. And that will be important, but I'll wait until our hand mill and our uh, oven are built up to show you what I mean. Now, while people are sleeping, since this takes a while, we can go ahead and move up to, let's say, 50 times speed. That is fine. At the very top of the map, I can show you we have a few things we can expand. This is going to be our raw food. We have 2.1 days worth of food currently available, so we need to keep on top of that. We can see our fodder, including our cereal grains and raw meat and stuff, things that we can turn into food, basically. Drinks, which mostly consists of water at the moment. We've got branches and other raw resources, and eventually we'll get some equipment, like some clothing and so on. Now, what else can we build up? Well, let's see. We could place down fences. This is a very good way of keeping animals away from your foodstuffs. Also, weirs to control some of the rivers and the water flow. If we ever eventually do get to a point of a drought, for example, try to control the water a little bit. Also, plant down some fields. I need to get down some garden beds. I think it's okay to place these next to the gatherer's shack. I think they're the ones that will end up gathering this stuff if it grows. Might be wrong on that. We'll keep an eye on it. Okay, now the next thing I want to show you is we can look at our faction data, and this has to do with everything involving our buildings and our population, our storage, and so on. So from here, we can get a quick view of all of our different people and how much progress they are currently making in their prosperity to progress up to higher tiers, what's their health, what are some of the needs that are currently not being met, etc. Here's our storage, here's a list of all the different animals that are currently available on the map, and here's all of our buildings. From here we can see all of the people who are currently working and how many upgrades are still available. What I want to do is get some people working at the hand mill and so on, right, in the oven. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to unassign the people who are currently here, right, we're going to turn that off for a moment. What I want to do is have somebody working multiple jobs, because you can do this. So I'm going to go to Sani over here, for example. Sani currently works as a gatherer, but Sani will also end up working over here as the person who mills all of our wheat which we can select, and also the person who is going to make all of our bread. Boom. Now, this may seem a little bit weird, but what I can do is go to someone like Sani, and I can actually rearrange the priorities of which building they're going to work in. So, for example, the way I want this to work is somebody be making bread whenever that is an option. So, I want that to be the top priority. If we cannot make bread, they will leave this job and move to the next one on their list. If we don't have any bread, that means we have no flour, so I want them to go work at the hand mill. So, we'll make that the next priority. And if we can't get any flour, that probably means I need more wild wheat. That means I should have them go work at the gatherer's shack. So by doing this, if the ability to make food is there, that's going to be Sani's top priority. If not, he's automatically going to go and work the jobs that will make it possible. I don't know how important that really ends up being, but it's interesting to know that you have that level of control with a bunch of your different workers. Now, I do need to make sure that I get myself some firewood as well as some clothing, so let's go to production. I'm going to place a sawing place really close to where we are getting the logs, and I'll also go ahead and get a tailoring table. doesn't really matter where this is. We'll go ahead and get this set up. It's important to really think about where your people are going to be working because you're going to be very strapped for workers, especially at the beginning of the game. But knowing that you can assign them to multiple buildings depending on your priorities, that ends up being pretty nice. So, for example, I want at least a couple of people dedicated to be working over here, for example, at the uh, fireplace and gathering up any food and getting it in a nice central location. We could assign some people ourselves over here and just make it a low-priority job, and that is another way that if they have nothing to do, let us go ahead and walk over here and those get something done that keeps people nice and active now let's go ahead and take a look at some of our people and examine their needs in more detail so this is an overview of like how hungry they are right but the needs are all individual requirements that people need in order to progress in their prosperity so right now this guy is level one he's currently missing any rough rags as we produce these his need will eventually be met once he is meeting all of these needs he can progress up to a tier two citizen and once you meet all of Tier 2, you move to Tier 3, and so on, all the way up to a Tier 7 roll. As you upgrade enough people, you're going to find that you're unlocking new buildings. So we're going to get hunting lodges, barns, wells, pottery, 
uh, dairy, better housing, right, and so on. So it actually is definitely worth trying to progress your citizens up. But if you look at their needs, this is always a good kind of look as to what you need to be working on. What am I missing in my city? What do I need to develop? We are slowly building up. Okay, a couple of citizens have officially reached tier two now, and Brofsburg advances. Perfect. All right, now we got a lot more stuff to do. Let's go ahead and get a hunting lodge up running first and foremost. Why? Because I want to murder all the stupid bunnies that are eating my food, okay? These things are really annoying. They're drinking all my water. Get rid of the dang things, for God's sake. It does take a while to get stuff built up in this game. And the thing is, normally what I would say is the pacing of this game feels a little bit off, right? But actually, because I've got like the 300 times speed, it's really not even that painful. Also, let's just make sure we just get a well like right now. I, I can already see that we are rapidly running out of water. Thank you, you stupid rabbits. Go ahead and place one of these things down. Let this start regenerating slowly over time. There we go. All right, so this thing will be able to start getting us some water. Currently, it is a vacant role. Would really benefit from maybe having uh, some people immigrating into our town, you know? That'd be that'd be great. Anyway, let's go ahead and hit the M key to open up a map. There we are, Profsburg, right over here along the river. There's also some other settlements not terribly far away where we could interact and maybe set up some trading partnerships. To do that, we're going to need to build a community center. So this big honking building right over here. We'll go ahead and place one of these down too. And there's our community center. Okay, that thing is now built. With that taken care of, let's go ahead and investigate a location of a meow. Possible immigration, allow for a few more people. Sure, we've got some open spaces. We'll go ahead and do this. So now that we have the community center, it should be a little bit easier to go ahead and start getting some more people into the town. And every extra person is more jobs being worked. I don't dislike the idea of getting a simple barn for some animals. That could be kind of good. We could place it down over here and then surround this by some fences. And that way we can control where the animals go, maybe plant down some grass in the area, and that keeps them happy. And I don't know if the river will count as a wall. I've never seen an animal cross a river yet, so let's assume that this is going to do the job. Okay. Uh, I also don't know if we need to capture animals, but I mean, I see some little sheepies over here who are currently working on tier six of their needs. Jeez, these are some very advanced sheep. Yeah, okay, well, I want that, though, because they've got milk and they've got wool, all right? I want the sheep. Also, we just discovered the tablelands. All right, so these people over here. Hello. So with these guys, we could go ahead and start setting up some trade agreements. They want some water. I don't mind that. We'll go ahead and just get this started. We'll take a little while to set up. Then we'll be able to work on things like right-of-way and passages, free trade. We can get, potentially, some abilities to settle on their lands. I don't know how that works out, but that could be kind of cool. Collaboration and so on. So all of this is nice. Plus, it looks like we are going to be able to transport our own goods between maps. So does this mean that I'm possibly going to be able to have four settlements running at a time? Whoa, I actually just zoomed in on their map. I didn't even know I could do that. Okay, cool. So does this mean that, yeah, I could have, like, four different settlements I'm working at the same time? I assume that is correct. This is kind of cool, actually. You got a little uh, plateau oasis. How'd you pull that off? All right, so let's see what we've currently got in the barn. Well, it looks like somehow I did indeed capture two sheep, which I could slaughter for some food. Not worried about that right now, though. With Sasha over here, we're... Oh, yeah, I just... Yep, okay, I just saw Sasha carry a helpless sheep into the barn. Get in the barn! All right, well, we've got our sheep now. We'll keep an eye on these guys, but hopefully we get more. Okay, so now this is going to start producing some stuff. It looks like we've already got some of the wool and some of the milk coming in. Not worried about population control right now. We are going to need to make sure we produce some fodder. So uh, maybe I could just go ahead and start planting some grass over here and stuff like this, right? We'll just go ahead and plant some of these. Boom, hopefully that's fine. And animals can across the river. Okay, that ain't going to work. That means I need to place down some fences. I was going to leave you guys. All right, I was going to leave you guys alone. But now that I know you're able to escape, we'll just go ahead and place this. I thought maybe the animals would want to be able to go get a drink. Okay, I thought that was a reasonable guess, but I am wrong. And it is now winter. Wow, that snow came out of freaking nowhere. We can start immigrating some additional people. Brigitte has joined our settlement. Okay. We've got some little quests and tasks and stuff like that. Family knocks on the door. Do I let them in? Sure, all right. That means I need to get some more housing pretty quick, but hey, that's more people. Of course, we're out of food, so that's an issue, but okay. 
I am going to assume that maybe placing down a fishing spot would be a good idea. Yes. I'd also love to get myself an open dairy, so that I'll be able to take some of the sheep's milk and turn that into some sheep cheese. I personally despise sheep cheese. I think it tastes awful. It tastes like a freaking barn. But hey, beggars can't be choosers, all right? I need food. I'll take what I can get. Well, here comes at least a little bit of food. Okay, so that helps quite a lot. We've got a lot of raw meat. Does mean I need at least an extra person or two to be working at the campfire so we can cook this stuff up, but that's fine. I am just a smidge concerned about how effectively we're going to be able to survive throughout this winter, but I think we're kind of, maybe, sort of getting there. I mean, I got cheese and meat. Somehow fruits. I don't know how we're getting winter fruit, but we are. Could get ourselves a cesspit. A place where we can dispose of dirt and animals' grossness here. Very stinky. Keep away from your people. Actually, what is this... What is this here? What is this red and stuff that I'm seeing around some of these houses? Are some of these places stinky? Huh? Does anyone want to tell me what this map means? Why am I suddenly sealing this color-coded map? I don't know, but I'm placing the cesspit over here, far away from my people. Oh, and actually we just reached level three. Somebody had their needs met. All right, so with that taken care of, now we've got access to some of the good stuff. So a farm is just a better version of the gatherer's hut, so we'll be able to place this in an area and kind of gather everything up. Great to go ahead and start placing down all sorts of our own curated crops as well. Um, I actually do think that this over here is not a bad spot to just go ahead and turn into a farming area. So we'll go ahead and place this here, probably get rid of the gatherer's shack, and that's going to be fine. And then plant a lot more stuff down. We can also get ourselves a fishery. Simple place for inland waters. Place one of these over here, for example. Hold on, like uh, this. That's a lot more fish. Yeah, gimme. We do need to get ourselves some pottery. Now, that's important because... A lot of these higher level buildings are going to require pottery in order to work, so let's go ahead and plan on placing this somewhere. And we survived winter. Okay, things should start coming to life about now, which means it's time to start gathering it all and get some dang food together. I wonder, by the way, do the individual fish have needs as well? If we click on this, oh my gosh, they freaking do. Yeah, no, this is what I'm saying. In so many games, you just kind of like have, hey, it's water over here. Place down a thing, and it will just produce fish. But this actually, like, simulates the fish in the individual lake. That's kind of cool. What's this over here, by the way? That's a wolf den. Ah, there's a bunch of wolves in there. Yeah, we probably don't want to mess with that, huh? And once again, I'm kind of sitting back with really nothing I can do because I've got a lot of projects out and running, and people are already overly busy. So let's just go ahead and keep playing at 300 times speed for a little bit, keeping an eye on things like food. The fact that we are now almost completely out of food obviously scares me a lot. And the big thing that's killing me right now is a lack of planks. Let's get myself another sawing place. Even if it's temporary, I'm going to need the extra production, I think. Oh, finally, the fishery's up and running. Okay, if I can get some workers over here, this obviously makes my life easier. If I want to keep getting more immigration, though, I need to get more housing space. But for that, I need more branches and stuff consistently. And we're really struggling on that front, I'm not going to lie. And at least the pottery's up and running. Okay, so people should be able to start extracting clay, which I believe they gather automatically from the rivers. Pretty sure. So there's nothing else we need to do there. Just let people go work full time and start producing pottery. My other buildings will start working on their own. I'd love to reduce total wood necessary for this, but I need a yearly cost of stone blocks, and I don't have upgrades there. We could, however, use some rough-hewn stone. Huh. It looks to me like this is an upgrade that does the exact same thing, but for a cheaper material. Let's just go ahead and do it. Got the farm up and running, finally. Okay, so you can see this has the exact same task list as the other stuff which means I can safely get rid of this building. I've also got the upgraded Forcer's Lodge up over here next to a whole bunch of trees and almost instantly produced a ton of branches, mushrooms, and so on. Okay. Okay, we seem to be turning a small corner over here. This is working. So let's go ahead and think about that marketplace now. So I want to place this only necessary once per map. It is a fairly large and in-charge building. I feel like it makes sense for me to place this kind of close to my community center and stuff, so we'll put it over here. So the market's up and a running. Okay. So now we need to add in a trade entry, whatever that's supposed to mean here. I'm pretty sure that's going to be something like, hey, we would like to maybe trade some grass or something. Sell it whenever it gets above a certain threshold or below or 
whenever we can get a certain amount of money, right, inventory, and so on and so forth. So this is where we can do a whole bunch of different trading if we want to. Let's go ahead and get rid of the oven and the mill, since we're not going to be doing anything with that at the moment. It is, after all, winter. It's not like we have any wheat available. Let's get ourselves an upgrade to the bakery. There we go. All right, we now have this, and we can bake meat in batter. Bake meat in batter? Oh, meat in... I assumed that this was just like the same roast meat that anyone else was able to make. Oh, interesting. Okay. No, we're making our own beef wellington. Well, phenomenal. Delicious. I love it. Do it. And, of course, now I regret not keeping the hand mill. Turns out we still needed that. Right, let's go ahead and get this back up. And some wheat is now coming of age. Actually, its growth phase appears to have skipped all the way into... Oh my god, it's, it's mega growth! I don't know what this red actually means over here. Whatever, the point is, that's a lot more cereal grains. Nice. Alright, we can use that for fodder and whatever the heck else we want. Yeah, it's definitely, like, overgrown. This skipped straight from yellow to red. Maybe it's dead. You think that's... Thi no, it's got 60 cereal in it. I don't know, actually. Maybe we grew grass by accident. Is there a way to actually go to some of these fields and say, don't produce a particular type of thing? Doesn't look like it. If you're gonna grow wheat, you get grass and you get some cereals. All right, fair enough. So the next thing we probably should be thinking about are ores. Now ores can be a little bit tricky to work with. We gotta go down to this map over here and if I select by ores in the very bottom right, we should see some little pickaxe symbols over here saying, hey, there's something you can mine over here. So all the way off in this direction, where are you? There it is. There is a tin deposit in this general vicinity. So what I can do is place a simple smelter nearby. Now, interestingly enough, you don't have to actually like mine the ores and then smelt them. You place a smelter over here and this is the mine. You've got to place it close by to an actual deposit. If you don't do that, well, that means you get no ores. What else do we have? We've got, let's see, that's a burrow. That's full of wolves. That's not what I had in mind. Ha ha ha, no. There's a tin deposit over there. That's not what I'm looking for. Is there more tin? Cool. What about like copper or anything? Nope, that's gonna be tin as well. Is there nothing but tin on this map? Sure seems that way. Okay. Well, in that case, I guess it doesn't matter that much. We'll just go ahead and build this smelter over here and hopefully we can get this thing built up and get to work on producing some metal bars. Now we've got some tin bars coming in. Okay, that's looking good. So now we should be able to make a copper and bronze forge. The problem is this requires copper. And as far as I know, I have not seen a copper ore deposit. So maybe we have no choice but to trade for that. I think I may have to assume that's the case. So let's go to trade here and let's create a new entry for some sort of a material, copper bars. I guess there isn't an ore or anything, so that's gonna have to be okay. They're a little on the expensive side. Ew. Maybe if I talk to our buddies over here at the Tablelands, they'll have something they can work with, right? They demand a lot of water for a trade agreement. What about some of these other people? Let's discover another work location and see if there are other factions who may be willing to trade with me a bit. And actually, it looks like over here at the Tablelands, I'm looking at their map, they got plenty of copper ore. Okay, so are you telling me that if I really, really, really want to start producing my own bronze, I'm going to need to set up a whole second colony? That could be exactly what they're telling me. The reason I care about that is I do need to, to place, well, I want to, place down some big cabins, which are going to require some sort of, like, little bronze, I don't know, trinkets or something along those lines, whatever they're called. Also, bronze tools and bronze uh, jewelry can come out of these forges. So yeah, if I want to go for some of the really advanced stuff, that's going to be a thing I need. Ugh. Okay, maybe we can get ourselves a tap room. All right, at the very least, I'm pretty confident my people would like a little beer. If I wanted to get to tier four prosperity, what I even need though? Yes, yeah, so we need the tap room. That's going to be a thing. People want to have children. Okay, so um, you have to be an adult in order to move on from there. And then, yeah, we need a shrine. So if I can get beer and god in our village, that actually will probably move us up to tier four. We've also discovered the hills. The hills are alive. Let's talk to these guys and see if there's anything. I no, this is not actually another faction, it looks like. This is just another map. So what would it take for me to just go ahead and set up another colony over here? No idea. Let's go ahead and discover some other locations. 
I seem to be struggling to actually get a lot of stone. The good news is there are some quarry locations. In theory, next to some mountains, we would be able to get a lot of extra stone excise. Is that something I need for a stonemason's? Uh, shop, maybe. Hue raw stones and usable pieces. Would that work over here? Yeah, actually, we could go ahead and place a stone cutter over in this direction. There's a couple of quarries over here. So if I'm lacking for stone, that's the easy solution. Work our way toward a mountain, get a ton of this stuff. Then again, it makes me kind of wonder about places like the mountains over here. Oh, actually, we did discover people in the coast. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, um, yeah, here in the mountains. Oh, this appears to be the only place you can get any iron. Interesting. Okay. So I'm guessing then if we wanted to build into very cold, nasty highlands with no food except for fish... Uh, we need to do a lot of trading to keep this place alive, but that will get us access to the iron we need to send back to Provsburg, and that keeps things going. That is my guess. The hills do have lead deposits, so the hills are alive with lead. Love it. And then, yeah, here at the coast. Okay, it turns out that there are two factions in the same map. Well, we'll go ahead and open up some trade agreements, shall we? Wow, Velfheim is rich as heck. 12 people own 2,677 wealth? These are the 1%. Well, we're going to get ourselves another barn over here. Um, can I possibly find a way to get myself some cows? Is that a thing we can do? Can anyone find any cows for me? Go kidnap them. Bring them back. Why are these people acting like they're completely stuck? Hold on. What's happened? There's a gate here. Is there not? Do you not know how to walk through gates? Hello? Oh, they never actually built the dang... Uh, okay. Okay. Can someone please build the gate, please? People are getting stuck. They're going to die in here pretty soon. Wait, can I not actually select a freaking... Hang on. De de delete. Delete fence. There it is. Delete fence. Delete. Delete the fence. Oh my gosh, they're all sleeping outside. No one is coming to help them. These guys are literally going to die. What the frick? Can, so <laughs> ah! can someone please build a freaking gate? There. I created an opening. Everyone gets out. Holy crud. Dingus is... This is how you die. And it looks like I was able to capture at least one cow. Perfect. All right. Cows are going to be really good for producing a lot more milk. Way better than sheep. Um, which presumably you can make into much higher quality cheese. But I'm less worried about that. I want that to go to the tap room. Give me the water. Give me the fruit. Give me the milk. Boom. Everyone's... Actually, we have enough ingredients. Never mind. Okay. Four out of three ingredients are apparently available. So there we go. Um, I guess we are now producing some happiness here or something. We are serving drinks. Y yeah. Yay. Yeah. That's great. So the only thing I'm really missing, then, is a church, or a shrine of some sort. Um, need those dang copper bars, but tell you what, if I can buy one of them, I'll call that good enough. So let's put an entry, copper bar, I want to buy with gold until I have one. Uh, yes. Hooray! We have copper bars! And now we've got a shrine. Okay. So that should mean that everyone's needs can now be met, and that means we'll easily move up to the tier four for everyone. Boom, Provsburg reaches level four. And along with that comes the stonemason shop, a much better bloomery for iron ore specifically. Glassworks beehives for honey and wax. Okay, that's that could be good for us for a whole new food source. Charcoal, sawmills, better dairy, iron forges, a hearty kitchen. No kidding. We can make pizza now. I love a pizza pie. Plus a wash house and so on, which I imagine meets some needs. A much nicer, bigger church. A harbor. Now, what on earth would I do with a harbor unless I'm along the coast? Probably nothing. Stone roads will get us around a little bit faster. We need to cut stone for that to work, but okay. And that's about it. And then we have just a couple of tiers to go. Looks like mostly in the community side of things is where we're going to have the most buildings. All the way up to building our own cathedral. Wow. That's kind of ambitious. Yeah. All right. So there's plenty of more nuance into this game than what I've currently explored. I'm only kind of now scratching the surface. Lots of upgrades that need to be made. Our population's grown a lot. We're still struggling with things like food. But look how much raw meat I've got. So much fish. That's no problem at all. The point being, this game has a lot of promise to it. It runs very, very well. There's a pretty decent amount of depth and progression that goes into this game, which is not bad. If I am correct that you're setting up different outposts across all these mountains, all of a sudden, now you have to worry about 
uh, the development and the trade between like four or five different locations, which could get pretty darn complicated, not to mention eventually working on collaboration with all these factions and so on. Yeah, there's a lot to be impressed about with this game for an early access title. I actually think this game does have a tremendous amount of promise. And again, the fact that it can run so well at 300 times speed is just downright impressive to me. I'm very happy with how this has turned out. So yeah, this is something to keep an eye on, guys, as it continues with its early access. I'm going to go ahead and include a link in the description down below, just so you can find this game on Steam if this is something you might want to check out for yourselves. Otherwise, I want to say a very big thank you to all of you for watching this video. I hope you found this informative and helpful in some way as you peruse your gaming options. If so, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe for my future content, and hit the notify bell. And I will see you guys next time.